Howdy folks, I'm Brian, I'm Amber. and here's some Reddit. Our first story is titled, Am I a Jerk for Telling My Son's Stepmom That I Don't Care About Her Kid? I'm a 31-year-old female, and my ex-husband Larry, a 33-year-old male, married his mistress Julia, a 42-year-old female, shortly after our divorce two years ago. She has a 13-year-old son, Alan, our son Cody, 12, doesn't really like Alan or Julia. I've tried to encourage him to foster a relationship with her and Cody, but he's pretty standoffish towards them, and I'm not going to force him to do anything between anyone. Cody has been asking if we can change the custody agreement to him living with me full time, and I've started the paperwork since he gave his reasoning. They're annoying, they won't respect his boundaries, they force him to spend time with Alan and Julia when he doesn't want to, etc, etc, etc. Julia has called me since finding out about the upcoming changes and has asked me to consider her and her son. She says that she can't have any more kids and that Cody is her chance to be a mother to another little boy and offer him love. She asked if I really needed less people to love my son, but I told her I simply don't care for her the way she does. She relented and said that if I won't consider her feelings, then consider Alan's, since he can't have another sibling naturally, and that I'm practically stealing his brother from him. Such theft. She suggested that I take Alan every other week so the boys could have some time together. I told her that I really don't care about Alan's feelings. He's not my kid, nor do I feel any obligation towards him. She called me heartless and said that I hope I experience what she has and can't have another kid. I'm already pregnant with my current boyfriend, and I know she knows this, so I know she said it out of hate and spite. Vicious. My ex doesn't have the gall to oppose me after his affair, but has voiced anger at me taking Cody full time. I haven't heard much back, but her social media is full of posts about how infertile mothers have it the worst and stepmothers are looking down upon. Am I really the jerk here, though? So, folks, what do you think? Jerk? Not the jerk? Not the jerk. <laughs> is she robbing Julia of another child? Oh my goodness. What is her son, Alan, is 13 and Cody is 12 and she's acting like Cody is a little kid? I mean, I know he's like little, little, but I mean, it, it almost reads like she thinks that it's he's like a little, little child. So I don't know. I, I think that um, OP is well within the rights here to help their son out of an uncomfortable situation where people aren't respecting her their boundaries. So I don't think that OP is the jerk here, and I think that if Cody doesn't want to spend time around people like this, then, I mean, he shouldn't be forced to. And, I mean, maybe someday he'll change his mind and want to spend more time with them, but that's not going to happen if they're trying to force him to spend time with them. So, yeah, I don't think that you're the jerk here, OP. Take care and good luck. Not the jerk, the nerve of the side piece to come at you like that. This is the one, like ma'am, you slept with my husband and you want me to care about your kid? If Cody says he's unhappy over there, then she's obviously going to do what's best for her son. That doesn't mean that he still can't visit his dad on weekends. The mistress can play house on the weekends, laughing my butt off like give me a break. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not following my husband's new religious beliefs? I'm a 28-year-old female and my husband, a 29-year-old male, met in college and we've been married for six years. My husband was raised in a strict evangelical household but broke away from those beliefs around the time that we met. We had what I thought was a very happy marriage until my husband's father passed away in early 2021. He received a cancer diagnosis and was gone a few weeks later. My husband was and is very understandably completely devastated. He has remained very close to his father despite no longer following the religious beliefs of his childhood. My husband decided to honor his father's memory by rejoining the church. Unfortunately, it's one of those churches that forbids many things that I find fun and relatively harmless and classifies them as addictions or tools of Satan. For example, before his father's passing, my husband and I enjoyed having a glass of wine or a cocktail now and again, maybe a couple times a week, and also enjoyed weeds or edibles, legally, once every month or two. 
But after joining the church, my husband decided that he was an alcoholic and a drug addict. He also decided that his occasional use of adult entertainment, uh, we enjoyed it together to spice things up, was also an addiction. He is now insisting that I am also an addict because I don't want to give all these things up. I tried to meet him halfway, I don't care about weed, and I'm fine never using again, and agreed not to drink at home if my husband truly wanted to have a sober household, but said that I still want to have an occasional drink when I'm out with my friends. I will admit that I both like and write erotica, which he never thought was a problem until he became religious. He also threw away my vibrator saying it was an instrument of the devil. Sounds like destruction of property to me. Sounds like destruction of property to me too. The latest is that my husband's pastor told him that video games, all video games, not just M-rated ones, are sinful and now my husband is insisting that I have a video game addiction too and I need treatment. Gaming is a main hobby for me. I'm probably allowed 8 to 10 hours a week. It's not an addiction in my view, just something I really, really enjoy. I work full time, I cook, I clean, I exercise, etc. I'm not neglecting anything else in my life except respect for my husband's new beliefs, I guess, by gaming. My husband wants me to start going to church with him. He says that he will go to couples counseling, but only through his church, not a secular counselor. I told him that I understand that he's grieving and struggling and I want to be kind and supportive and if it really helps then we can keep alcohol and weed out of the house but I'm not going to become an evangelical. Unlike him, I was raised with atheist parents and I'm not going to restrict my life activities that he finds acceptable under his new religious beliefs. And I'm not going to restrict myself to activities that he finds acceptable under his religious beliefs. It sounds like he doesn't find anything acceptable under his religious beliefs, except for maybe quilting. I also asked him to please stop labeling habits that he doesn't like as addictions. Of course he now thinks that I'm a jerk for being mean to him while he's grieving. Most of our family members and friends also think that I should do what he asks in the name of being supportive. So am I the jerk? Alright OP, <laughs> what do you folks think? Should OP give up everything to be supportive of their husband? No. I think that this is a tough situation. I think that this may very well be the end of a very happy marriage. Um, I think that is really unfortunate. And I don't advise you to go to his church's couples counseling because they're just going to say that you're in the wrong and you're what's causing the problems. I mean, this is literally, you know, this is, <laughs> this would be a very biased uh, marriage counseling. Let's put it that way. He has uprooted and upended your world, and I understand he's grieving, and I understand he's mourning, but that doesn't give him an excuse to start, you know, uh, labeling you as a bad person because you're doing things that you find perfectly acceptable. He is imposing his religious beliefs on you, which I think is wrong. You have the freedom of choice when it comes to religion, and if he has decided that religion is more important than you, then he's made his choice. And that's really what this seems like to me. He has chosen religion over you. And I, of course, I'm rooting for you. I want you to have a happy marriage, but I think that things may have fundamentally changed to a point where you may not be able to get back into a good marriage with him. I mean, I think this is a pretty clear indicator that he's looking for something different in his life right now. So as sad as that may be, if you can get him into marriage counseling through a secular organization, I think that would be great because it might help him to see where he's going and what he's doing to you. Otherwise, I, I think all that's going to happen with marriage counseling here is that they're just going to label you as being the problem. That's kind of my thoughts. So anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk, you've already made far more concessions to him than I feel like you needed to. I appreciate that he's grieving, but you shouldn't have to change your entire life to be supportive. It sounds like pretty much everything you do for any kind of recreation, he's having an issue with. It's your personal time. He should have no control over what you do with it. And I definitely wouldn't do the church's couple counseling. I would not trust them to have a neutral, unbiased perspective. I 100% agree with this. Counseling through the church will not help. They will just reiterate what he's telling you. 
don't change who you are. You are doing a wonderful job at being supportive, but he's asking way too much. I am hoping that he comes back to himself and you both can laugh about this later. Not the jerk. You're doing your best you can to obviously love him very much. He is grieving and being manipulated in that grief by the church. That church is the jerk here and cancer. F cancer. I agree. F cancer. All right, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not letting my boyfriend take $150 an hour tennis lessons? No. <laughs> that, is, that is gross, gross amount of money for lessons. Maybe, maybe that's acceptable in some things. I don't know. My boyfriend and I are in our early 30s and we've been together for several years, but he doesn't want to get married. So I found out that apparently he has decided to take tennis lessons. I figured, all right. I didn't think that they would be overly expensive. Well, I looked at the bank statement and apparently he's had four four-hour sessions that have cost us $2,400 in total. Now let me clarify that we are not rich. He doesn't understand why I'm mad, and he says that if he had a job, I wouldn't care. And I guess in a way he's right, but I'd still be uncomfortable with it. He says he's enjoying it. But it's $150 an hour, and for some reason, they're four hours long. That's $600 a session on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's ridiculous. I agree. Am I the jerk for saying that my boyfriend couldn't take tennis lessons because I can't afford them? I know it sounds silly, but I don't think that sounds silly at all, OP. <laughs> but I think that I might be since I only really care because it's my money that he's using. And we're supposed to be partners. He proposed, but there's no paper since he didn't want that. But it just rubs me the wrong way. And I did tell him that he could spend my money like his own, but this is sort of contradicting that. As for the, what is he contributing question, he literally does everything at home. I mean, every single chore you can think of, from cooking to taking out the trash. There is absolutely no household task that he hasn't already been done when I'm home. It's kind of amazing, honestly, from dishes to mopping, to grocery store shopping, to fixing the steering box on my car. No, I'm not 100% sure that they're tennis lessons, but that's what he said and I trust him. And I'm not going to give him money for tennis lessons anymore. All right, folks, what do you think? The jerk? Not the jerk? Not the jerk. You know, this is a difficult situation. I certainly agree that $150 an hour is excessive for tennis lessons. Surely he can find cheaper tennis lessons for starters or even just go out to a tennis court and bat around a ball for a few hours if this is what he really enjoys. No tennis lessons needed. Okay, I mean, maybe if he was training to be a professional tennis player, $150 an hour tennis lessons would be a reasonable thing. And maybe it is. I mean, clearly someone's paying that price. But in this particular case, this is something he's doing for entertainment, right? He's doing this as a hobby. He's not trying to further a tennis career out of this. And it seems excessive. It seems like there are probably cheaper options out there. I don't know. I'm not a tennis player. Maybe maybe it is truly like one of these things where, you know, a tennis trainer is $150 an hour job, you know, across the board. But I, I honestly think that there are probably people who would be willing to teach him tennis at $20 an hour. <laughs> probably. So I don't know. I think that this is a bit excessive. I think that he took advantage of your whole... Um, spending his money, your money like his. And I think that's the case here. I think that that, that is taking advantage of the situation. So yeah. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Wait, what? He doesn't work. Uses your money. Separate finances now. Not the jerk. You will be a jerk if you stay in this manipulated situation though. And I think OP's comments kind of clarified on that. I, I don't really feel like this is a manipulative situation. I think that he is just uh, very much into tennis lessons. Let's hope that's what he's into. Doing every single chore and leaving nothing for OP to do when she comes home from work is contributing. Exactly.
Not the jerk, former tennis pro here, no lessons are $150 an hour, and if they are, there's no way that they're four hours long twice a week. He's doing something illegal 100% and you need to kick him off your bank account. They're $70 an hour for the head coach at the most reputable place that I know of. I'm sure you could find someone somewhere willing to charge $150 an hour, but you'd almost have to go out of your way to find someone that expensive. So it looks like folks think that this is actually not a reasonable price for tennis lessons. So yeah. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. And if you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.